Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nick. If you are new here, welcome. If you are not new here, welcome back. Anyways, we're in a new year. We're in 2022. We made it, thank God. So I was thinking about how I kind of wanted to do the lineup for like schedule wise going forward. So I think what we're gonna do is Wednesdays will continue to be TV shows. Saturdays will continue to be movies, but I had such a fun time rewatching the Scream movies with everybody that I've decided that since I am the type of person that likes to watch my favorite movies over and over and over and over and over and over, that one Saturday a month is gonna be a new little series that I'm calling Nick's Favorites, where I'm gonna be rewatching one of my favorite movies and commenting on that and having a good time, whatever, whatever, whatever. To start this series in the new year, we are going to be watching my favorite movie of all time, the original 1978 classic, Halloween. Now, I love every film in this franchise, even the ones that are real, real, real bad, like Halloween Resurrection, Halloween Kills, yada, yada, yada. But the OG is the earliest movie that I could ever remember seeing. I feel like I was watching it in the womb. That's how far back it goes. Halloween was a big thing for me growing up, and yeah, I'm just really excited to watch it with everybody. So before we get into the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification button so that you can get notifications when I upload a new video. Also, feel free to check me out on social media. I have Instagram and I have Twitter. All right, we are starting this year off with one good scare. So let's get into Halloween. Ah, I'm so excited. Y'all have no idea how many times that I've seen this movie, and I'm not exaggerating with this number, but I have probably seen the original Halloween at least 500 times. Black cats and goblins and broomsticks and ghosts, covens of witches with all of their hosts. You may think they're scary, you're probably right. Black cats and goblins on Halloween night trick or treat. When I was 18, I traveled to California just so that I can visit all of the filming locations. And I actually got to go inside the original Myers house. I ate inside the hardware store. I've been to the Wallace house. I've been to the Doyle house. And eventually we'll get into Halloween H2O, which is an absolute gem of a movie. And I've been to that school too. And here we begin the shortest sex session in the history of sex. I think what kills it for me is the fact that he comes downstairs and he's putting on his shirt again and she's fully nude. Nobody has time to have sex within 30 seconds. And if you do, I'm sorry. Hey, he got off and got out. Good for him. That's what she said. <laughs> Michael! I've always thought that that was a really interesting choice that they made to have, from his point of view, him look up and watch his own hand stabbing. Look how cute Will Sandin is as a kid. Also, can we talk about how the, the knife is like the size of his body? In 2021, I went to a horror movie convention where I got to meet a lot of the cast. I met Nick Castle, I met James Jude Courtney, but I got to take a picture with the station wagon. Hi, I'm Paul. Since when did they let them wander around? You drive up to a sanitarium and you just see all the patients in, in the middle of the night in a rainstorm standing around outside wandering around? No, no. Oh no, oh no. Now I'm no car expert, but I'm fairly certain that the tires would not be making the sounds that they're making because the pavement is wet. So I think it would just be sliding, if, if anything, not making those sounds. I also love the wrench in his hand. I know a lot of people don't like when people do this, but I'm surprised that during the 50 million and seven re-releases of this movie that they've done, that they've never actually bothered to go back in there and like use a little special effects and edit out the wrench. I'm personally fine with them keeping it. It adds to the charm of it, but I'm surprised that they haven't done that. 
and I got to go to Lori's house and sit on the stoop with a pumpkin. When I went, the owners of the Strode house, they had a fake pumpkin and a little sign sitting on the porch of the house saying like, we know that people come to this house because of Halloween, so feel free to take the picture, go sit on the, the corner stoop. Amazing. I love that they did that. We love people who are not assholes. Now, obviously, this was filmed in Pasadena, California, but just a little news flash. I live in the Midwest. It does not look like this around Halloween. You're not supposed to go up there. Yes, I am. I don't give a fuck. I wish I had you all alone. Just the two of us. Oh, uh, shut up. When you think about fuck it, up. Up. I'm not responsible, Sam. Oh, no. I told him how dangerous you he was. You couldn't have two roadblocks and an all-points bulletin wouldn't stop a five-year-old. The man, the myth, the legend. Donald Pleasance. For people like that have passed that I would have loved to have met before they pass, two. Stan Lee, Donald Pleasance. Oh. It's so good. It's so good. He's so f***ing creepy. Part of the magic of the original and a part, a part of what made the character of Michael Myers so scary is because in the original, 90% of what he's doing until he actually commits the murders is he's just stalking people. And it's not just stalking people. He's purposefully allowing Lori to see him as like a way of like telling her like, I'm giving you a little bit of a hint about what's to come. He wants her to know that he's following her. And we don't really get that in the newest ones. The boogeyman is coming. Leave me alone. He doesn't believe us. Sure. Don't you know what happens on Halloween? Yeah, we get candy. Also, f*** these kids, man. I hate kids. And now he's running home to change his underwear. <laughs> Now, the, the television cut that came out a couple years later, to be able to fill out the runtime, to be able to show it on TV, they filmed additional scenes. And one of the scenes that they filmed was Linda going over to Lori's house and saying that somebody was following her, that she thought it was the same guy from earlier. And then she asked Lori to borrow a blouse and et cetera, et cetera. It's hard for me to say because I think this is a damn near perfect film, but I wish that they would have somehow had that originally because I think it makes a little bit more sense that, you know, he's following Tommy. I wish it, we would have seen more of him stalking the entire group, but I guess, I don't know, maybe that pulls the attention away from Lori. I've always wanted to go to the Rabbit and Red Lounge. I just feel like it'll be a really, really classy joint, you know? We're from Haddonfield, couldn't be prouder. Can't hear us now, we'll yell a little louder. Shut up. We have three new cheers to learn in the morning. The game is in the afternoon. I have to get my hair done at five, and the dance is at eight. I'll be totally wiped out. I don't think you have enough to do tomorrow. Totally. Why didn't you wait for me? We did. Fifteen minutes. You totally never show. That's not true. Here I am. Annie's outfit, though. The yellow. Ugh. The seventies were a time to be alive. I thought you were babysitting for me. The only reason she babysits is to have oh, a place. Oh shit. I have a place for that. <laughs> A little bit of humor mixed in. I love it. I love it. I stand Annie. Annie's a bitch. She's a bitch. But I love Annie. Hey, isn't that Devon Graham? I don't think so. I think he's cute. Look at him. Look at the way he's like looking over like, hey. Hey, jerk. Speed kills. And that's the... What'd you say, bitch? What? You want to say that again? I'm babysitting the Doyles. Oh, terrific. I've got three choices. Watch the kids sleep, listen to Linda screw around, or talk to you. <laughs> She's such a douchebag. But see, like, I like the chemistry between these three girls, because even though they all have very different personalities, like, they still mesh very well. They get along well. I know that the dialogue is a little bit dated, but I still, like, it still rings true to me. I can I can watch this and still feel like this is how they talked back then. These are real friends. He's so f***ing creepy. I don't see anything. You drove by so fast that when you yelled at, 
subtle, isn't he? Annie, you got some big balls, girl. Lori, dear. Wants to take you out tonight. And you see little John Carpenter's cigarette smoke floating across the screen there. Well, home sweet home. See you later. Bye. Bye. I wonder how far away Lori lives, because clearly Annie and Linda live lit like two doors down from each other. Oh, I didn't mean to startle you. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? He's so wholesome. I love Sheriff Brackett, even though he's totally a dick to Dr. Loomis. I still like him. Also, now we get this scene change and everything's suddenly wet. Girl, I know it was the 70s, but maybe after seeing that, you'll stop leaving your windows open when you're not home. And I love that they didn't even tr bother trying to explain, like, she, er, she never breaks eye contact looking down at him, but he just suddenly disappears right in front of her eyes. And I love that they just never even attempt to explain how that happened. See, I love this because I feel like it gives you a better sense of the neighborhood. Now, obviously, they there's only so much that they can do because they're in California, spreading around a couple bags of leaves before and after each scene. Like, while it doesn't look like Illinois during the fall, for certain neighborhoods, it still does effectively capture the the vibe. It captures the vibe. Judith Myers, Myers. Row 18, 18 plot, plot 20. 20. Oh, Lord. I remember over in Russellville, old Charlie Bowles, one night he, he finished dinner and he, he excused himself from the table and he went out to the garage and he got himself a hacksaw. I'm genuinely surprised that the series, aside from like a, like a short story that I believe was in the back of a comic book, they haven't really touched anymore on the whole Charlie Bowles thing, which I'd be interested to see. I, I, I figured that with how much the new David Gordon Green's films seem to basically just want to be a rehash of all the greatest hits of the franchise, I'm surprised that that was a little thing from the original film that they never tapped into. I saw somebody standing in Mr. Riddle's backyard. Probably Mr. Riddle is watching me. Mr. Riddle was watching you? Lori, Mr. Riddle is 87. He can still watch. It's probably all he can do. <laughs> She's such an asshole. <laughs> Lori, stop clapping. What's the matter with you? Just be natural. There he is. Just be natural. This is one of my favorite parts of the movie. <laughs> it's hard growing up with a cynical father. Aren't you going to be late? Huh? I said, aren't you going to be late? He shouts, too. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Annie is such an asshole. Ah, oh, I love Annie. It's gone too soon, but not from our hearts. Well, maybe a few minutes. It's, I've got to take just care. important. Ten minutes. I'll be here. See, everybody's focused on Michael behind him, but can we take a second to address the vein in that man's head? Like, it's aggressive. What's the matter with you? I think he knew. I'm sure he could smell it. No, he didn't. See the look on his face? He always looks like that. What are you going to wear to the dance tournament? I didn't know you thought about things like that, Lori. I love the way that this scene is shot. From being in the back seat, and you have the glare from the sun coming through the trees and bouncing off the camera lines. It's gorgeous. I'd rather go with Ben Tramer. Ben Tramer? I know it! So you do think about things like that, huh, Lori? Shut up. He's cute! Ben Tramer! Shh. I love it. The, the interactions between these two girls, they're, they're so authentic to me. And it's like, obviously, Lori is, is the more wallflower, studious book type as presented within this movie. But I like the fact that even though she's clearly friends with, you know, more popular party type girls, like, they're not mean to her. I mean, they're mean to her, but they're not, like, cruel to her. They, you know, they'll jokingly, lovingly pick on her. But there still seems to be quite a lot of love between all three of them. And now we've driven to the small, sleepy town of Haddonfield, where in less than a couple minutes, it's suddenly night. What is that? Dog. It's still warm. He got hungry. I know, like, people always say that he ate the dog, but I never once interpreted that as him having actually, like, fed on the dog. Which, I mean, I guess would make sense, because, I mean, he's got to eat. But I always interpreted that as when he says he got hungry he meant like he got hungry for a kill. 
so he killed whatever he could. That's just my interpretation. I met him 15 years ago. I was told there was nothing left. No reason, no conscience, no understanding. Even the most rudimentary sense of life or death, or good or evil, right or wrong. I met this six-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face and the blackest eyes. The devil's eyes. Mm, I love this movie, it's so good! Because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. Yeah, because he's f***ing crazy. You were right. Haddonfield owes Dr. Loomis a collective apology. Especially Brackett. Brackett's the real villain here, let's be real. He didn't listen. He didn't listen. Why do you keep him under there? Mom doesn't like me to have him. Laser man. Neutron man. I can understand why. Tarantula man. When I was his age, I, like, the first movie I ever saw in theaters was Scream, and I was like six. Very, very different childhoods. Lindsay, get this dog out of the kitchen right now. <laughs> Lindsay's just straight chilling. She's like, I don't go f what's happening. I just talked with Ben Tramer and he got real excited when I told him how attractive you were to him. Oh man. Oh no, 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 no. She's such a douche. I mean, I love her, but damn. I mean, she's trying to be a good friend. She's trying to help her friend out. I get it. But damn, the embarrassment of it all. And Lindsay's just still, just sitting there straight chilling. Lindsay doesn't give a f what is going on around her. Lindsay, Lester's barking again and getting on my nerves again. I say that all the time. <laughs> this shot, I believe that the way that they filmed that was it's in reverse. So I believe they picked up the dog. So the dog, when you first pick up a dog, I believe they said that the, the legs are usually limp and then he raises the legs. So I believe that is just reversed. I always wonder, did like John Carpenter, like when was that point in time in which John Carpenter was like, yeah, I want to remake the thing. I choose to believe that it happened during this movie. I saw the boogeyman. I saw him outside. There was nobody outside. There was. What do you look like? The boogeyman. Yeah, that's real fucking helpful, Tommy. You're so dumb. Like, can you imagine if Tom, when she was like, what does the boogeyman look like? And he was like, well, he's got blue overalls on and a white mask. Laurie been like, well, shit, maybe I should call the police because this is suspicious. But nope. Tommy had to be the least helpful human being possible. Ugh. No ma'am. No ma'am. No ma'am. Oh, is this one of your cheap tricks? Never once have I ever actually, maybe this was like a thing in the 70s that they just obviously don't have anymore. Please let me know in the comments if you've ever actually seen something like this, but I have never seen a separate exterior building just dedicated to the washer and dryer. To me, does it make sense to have in the Midwest when you have winters? Because then you have to walk through the snow to clean your clothes. Hello? Hi, Lindsay. This is Paul. Is Annie there? Get her for me, will you? Okay. I like that, like, she hung up on him. She didn't, like, set the phone to the side. She hung up on him. Now promise me you won't tell anybody about this. She got stuck in the winter. She's such a dick. I love Lindsay. I love Lindsay. Oh, that's fabulous. When did they leave? About a half hour ago. Oh, utterly fantastic. The, yeah, I mean, honestly, I feel like that's the biggest thing that I've been missing from this franchise for so long. Like, it's a present in some of the other movies, but the stalking, I feel like such a big factor about what makes this movie work and what makes it effective is the fact that the audience continues to see this man stalking them. As an audience member, you're just sitting there like, when when is he going to attack? When is he finally going to strike? And they wait for so long to actually do it, but they never for a second make you stop and forget that he is out there. He's just outside the house. It's effective. Besides, I'm on my way to pick up Paul. Wait a minute. If you watch her, I'll consider talking to Ben Tramer in the morning. Deal. Look, I love Annie, but I already don't like kids. And then you're going to drop a second one? Wh whereas you're getting paid for this. I'm not getting paid to watch Lindsay. You're getting paid to watch Lindsay. But you want me to watch her so y'all can go and have a 30-second romp? Uh, Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Not me. Certainly not I. I give you all. No keys. 
but please my pa. I feel like before I even ever registered that it was from this movie, like my, my, I would just hear it around my house, the whole My Paul song, constantly. I constantly sing My Paul. But please my Paul. Oh, hey, will you shut the fuck up and let me sing? He didn't cut her in the front of her throat. He slashed like the upper right section of her throat. So A, I don't know how he did that while he was still holding her throat, but I wish they would have been a little uh, more continuity. Annie's head is on the left side of Michael. What's gonna happen next? Oh, and now Annie's head is on the right side of Michael. Walking into the front of this house, which clearly has nothing to the right of the front door when you walk in. But when you see the inside, there's an entire living room there. I understand why. I understand that the exterior is different from the interior of the house. I get that. Just a fun little, like, blooper that I always notice. Hey, Lonnie, get your ass away from there. Look how happy he is. He's so happy. <laughs> it's so sweet. And it's so relatable because kids, right? He just gets so happy knowing that he has scarred those kids for life. It's just so relatable, you know? Because f*** them kids. All right, I'll stay with you tonight. Just on the chance that you're right. And if you are right, damn you for letting him go. See, again, Brackett is the real villain. Coming down on Loomis, Loomis, ugh, Loomis is literally there when nobody else believes him. And has been for so long trying to get Michael locked up in a maximum security penitentiary. And nobody listens to him because, he, oh, because he hasn't said, said anything, which, he, sure, I get. But no. So don't rip my blouse, it's expensive, idiot. Then you rip my clothes off, then we rip Lindsay's clothes off. Yeah, I think I got it. Well, that didn't age well, now did it? You are going to jail! Period! <laughs> Nobody's gonna address the fact that he just left his door open to his car. Y'all were feeling real safe in 1978, let me tell you. Look at him, little voyeur. He's standing there like... <gasps> he doesn't even understand the feelings that he's having right now. Well, she's totally not here. Probably stopped off someplace. Have her call me when she gets home, though. I have Lindsay here, and I want to know what time to put her to bed. Okay. Later. Bob's glasses are everything. Good sis PJ Soul. She trips over the camera cable or whatever, the lighting rig cable that was going through the floor of the living room. Trivia. Like, I get they're horny, but they opened the door to the car and you, you hear beer cans fall out. There's beer cans all over these people's carpets. The disrespect. Mm, it's too much. He's a voyeur, man. He just wants to watch. He just wants to listen. This is kind of gross, but logistically, how did that just work? Like, think about it. I'm gonna be very vague. They were doing their thing, they finished. He immediately moved over and laid face down. How? I'll be right back. Don't get dressed. You should never say I'll be right back. Cause you won't be back. And she's just smoking in these people's bed. Like, that's going to make their sheets reek. Annie will never be invited back. <laughs> Come on out. The scene is, ugh, ugh, it's excellent. That shot is everything. Also, I mean, it probably is a little bit unrealistic, but people are constantly like, there's no way that there would have been enough knife to be able to pin him to the door. Let me let me rewind time for you back to Halloween night, 1963. Did you see the fucking size of his knife? Well, did you 
get my beer? This to me is hands down the creepiest part of this movie. Because there's like a childlike quality to him. Like he, like I mentioned before with the stalking, like he wants to scare them beforehand. And this is f***ing scary. Like that's creepy. The, the bed would be full of shit. All right, all right, come on, where's my beer? Hey, queen. Look at now Michael ruined their sheets, cut holes in their sheets. Like the poor Wallace family. Well, I'm gonna call Lori. I wanna know where Paul and Annie are. I think the thing that I love about the way that this is shot is like within the bedroom, the only lighting is on specific areas that need to be lit. The rest of the room is basically completely black. Are you all right? <sighs> Ooh, and this, the first full shot of his face without any obstruction or of the mask. I love it. Hey, queen. It's so good. It's so good, you guys. It's so good. Now, I get he's obviously a couple, like, houses down from it, but I wish that they would have simply had him, like, be like, okay, I've been waiting at the Myers house for a little bit too long, and maybe start walking and then see the car, because it seems odd to me that he's been standing there with his eyes peeled looking around and it, at no point throughout the night noticed the car. And I'm also a little bit confused as to how far the Wallace and the Doyle houses are supposed to be from the Myers house because he parked the car in front of the Doyle house or well just past it. So when did he move the car? I haven't talked yet about the score for this movie. Now, the score is iconic. Everybody knows the score. Everybody loves the score. So I don't need to get into that, but I'm going to. This score is everything. When it is fall here, if I am outside walking around, I have my headphones on, I have this score playing, and I am Laurie Strode. The color usage and the lighting design in this movie, it's so good for being on such a small budget because it's like every, it really looks like night because everything around them is basically black except for the specific pieces of the scenery that we need to, to see to know where we are. This, this shot, I don't know what it is about this shot. I've had nightmares about that shot. So many nightmares. There's just something so unsettling about just the subtle glimpse of light coming in through the door frame. <sighs> so good. See, and now her throat is cut across. He didn't cut her across the front of her throat. But this is perfection. The Doyles have some crazy large storage compartments in their house. Like you only saw Bob from like the waist up. What the fuck was he hanging from? Oh, it's so good. It's so good. The subtle light that illuminates his face. It's so good. Brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular. Look, 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 he's like, game on, bitch. I've been waiting all day. I like how in certain shots, you can see that the pane of glass that she breaks with her hand is different than the rest of them. Like the rest of them for the most part are clear, but that one's a little bit foggy looking. Please! Can you hear me? Oh God! That would have been me. I'm like, sorry, you're on your own, honey. I'm not trying to get stabbed. Okay, now let that shit just, just mutilate her white ass and leave. No, ma'am. I'll go to your funeral and drop off a bunt cake at your parents' house, but no, ma'am. I always interpreted like the fact that like she runs out and she runs to the house next door and she's banging on the door. I always interpreted that as like he was waiting to see if somebody was going to come and help her. And when he realized that nobody was coming, that's when he decided to follow her across the street. 
I don't have time for your shit. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Whoopee. She got his ass good, too. All right. I can forgive her for dropping the knife this time. Well, I mean, realistically, no. No, 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 no. That knife would not have been pried from my hands until the police showed up. But I can get, I, I get it to an extent. I get it to an extent. Now, the next time that she does it, no. Hal, I killed him. He can't kill the boogeyman. So I feel like the scene in the first scream before Billy gets fake stabbed, how you can see the shadow of Ghostface entering the room before both of the characters register it. What do I have to do to prove to you that I'm not a killer? Oh my God. Huh? I, I always feel like that, obviously, Scream has a ton of homages to Halloween. I always feel like that was a riff off of Michael coming up the stairs where you can actually see him before there's any sort of musical sting, before the characters see him coming. I love that. Do the Doyles have, like, four shirts? Why is there no clothing in their closet? There's a couple shirts behind her and then another couple shirts on the other side, but there's all of these hangers, and this closet is, for the most part, empty. Are they nudists? Come on, girl. Be resourceful. Look at her go. Look at her go. Grab that knife. Got him. So this shot, when she like starts to rise up and she holds out the knife to like, and she has like this look on her face of like, I'm still ready for you, bitch. And I love it. It's so simple and nuanced. I love the look on her face right here. I don't know why I love it so much, but I love it. Now that, no, 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 no. You stabbed him in the neck and he got up. And then she turns her back to him. <laughs> like, girl. But this shot. Hey, queen. Ugh. It's perfection. This is perfection in cinematic form. It's so good. Now, I don't know about that silly putty prosthetic that he had on his eye, but look, you saw Michael without a mask on. But we don't, we don't need to talk about that actor. Now, Dr. Loomis did what needed to be done. He didn't pull a lorry and throw that shit away. Look, he knows. He knows. He just knows. <sighs> this movie is so f***ing good. Oh my god. All right, so that was 1978's Halloween, my favorite movie of all time. Yes, it has its flaws, all movies do, but there, I, I honestly, I can't put it into words what exactly it is, but this movie was just so influential for me when it comes to getting into horror in the first place, I think. I mean, in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have watched it being so young. Despite what the plot is actually about, it's just this magical world and it's it's something that for me that I can just transport myself to when I need to. It's 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 yes, it's a horror movie, but it's it's a safe space for me almost. It's it's kind of like how I view Buffy or Spider-Man stuff or some stuff like that or Scream. I I think it's so beautifully made. I know every word to this movie, been to the filming locations, met majority of the cast members, I met Jamie Lee Curtis, and almost shit my pants. We will be doing more Halloween movies. In regards to doing it for Nick's favorites, initially when we first start doing these rewatches, there's gonna be three movies done, so I'll let you try to guess what the next two Halloween movies are that I will do. They are what I refer to as the Holy Trinity. So if that's not an indication, then I don't know what it is. 
Let me know what you thought about this absolutely amazing movie, which you are only allowed to give positive reviews for. Just kidding. If you hated it, if you loved it, if you were lukewarm, let me know. I'm curious to see what everybody else thinks. And I will see you next time. <laughs>